Find out how Stonehill women's basketball took down the number one team in the nation last Saturday. Folks, don't go anywhere. This is Skyhawk Update. <laughs> Hello Stonehill fans and welcome back to another week on Skyhawk Update. I'm Craig Riotto and I'll be your host for tonight's show as we recap the news and highlights from last week's contests in baseball, basketball, hockey, and indoor track and field. And we'll tip it off with the basketball teams in their Wednesday games against conference opponent Southern New Hampshire University. The women ranked number 14 in the nation heading into the last full week of the regular season could lock up the number two seed in the Northeast 10 tournament with a win at home over the Penman, a team they beat by just eight points back in early December. But this is a different Skyhawks team in late February, already at 20 wins on the year. Stono in their home white uniforms taking on Southern New Hampshire in their road blue uniforms. Off the tip, Skyhawks getting on the floor and works it over to Asia Ewing. How about it? Asia Ewing, three points. She is very accurate when given that kind of space. And flip it around, keep it going. Another three ball. Pelletier, quick trigger. Oh my goodness, she is so good this year from downtown. But there's a reason Southern New Hampshire's a feared team in the conference. That's Sloan Sorrell. She went for 21 points, 11 rebounds. Tough player. Skyhawks. They have Mary Louise Dixon. If you blink, she'll do this to the hole in a flash. Mary Louise Dixon playing on a different level late here in the season. Halftime score 45-33 and the Skyhawks would pour it on from there. Here they get the steal. They go in transition. Jamie Panton jump stop lays it in. Taylor made Stonehill basketball. And then to finish things out, Ashley Gendron. Why not get involved in the scoring? Skyhawks roll 90-65 at home picking up their 17th conference win. And it would be the men's turn, in desperate need of a win just to extend their tournament life, hosting Southern New Hampshire as well. Jack Cole off the tip, he never loses a tip, right back to his own team. And Brian Hamer, early with the hustle, forces the steal. Jack Cole scoops it up and jams it home on the other end. Stonehill looked very good early on as they ran Southern New Hampshire out of the gym. And it was plays like this, freshman Josh Heiliger, physical take to the hole with the finish. Now getting it done on the defensive end. Rahime Thompson swats that one right into the hands of Heiliger. Here he goes on the push. He's got speed. What a lay in. That's the kind of stuff you simply cannot coach. Put Stonehill on top. And then next possession, why not? Josh Heiliger for three on the assist from Sam Markle. Number 20 had himself a career day going for 16 points. But Southern New Hampshire would just be too much in the end. They take down the Skyhawks in Easton. And Stonehill with that would be mathematically eliminated from the playoffs. Stonehill Baseball kicked off their season this past week in the Ripken Experience Challenge at Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. With only two seniors on the roster, many were wondering how the Skyhawks would fare early in the season. But as you can see, this team would leave no doubt. Five games in just four days and the Skyhawks go 4-1 and one with a combined overall record. The pitching is outstanding for Stonehill with a combined ERA of 1.59, averaging 7.74 Ks per game. Armand Rugel with a win and two saves already, zero earned runs through 5.1 innings pitched. Your batting leaders through the first five games, Billy Corrales slugging 556, five RBIs, six runs, and Mike Ziner also doing his part batting 400 and bringing in five runs. Men's hockey had to face St. Anselm College in back-to-back -back games last week as they wrapped up the regular season with a 7-2 loss at the hands of the Hawks. Four days later, both teams turned it around for the NE10 playoffs on Saturday in which the number four seeded Skyhawks drew the number one seeded Hawks in the first round. Though Stonehill fared better in the second matchup, San Anselm still managed a 6-3 win on their home ice, eliminating the Skyhawks from the playoffs for the second straight year. Stonehill actually had the game tied at 3-3 with 10 minutes and 11 seconds to play in the third period. The St. A's would pour on three third period goals, including one on open net to down the Skyhawks. Brian Rooney scores a goal in his last game of his junior season, along with Richard Harris and Billy Carey. Taziopoulos gets the loss, but saves 44 shots. The Skyhawks fall to 11-15 on the year, sub-500, but with nearly their entire roster returning next season, should look to have a great year in 2013-2014. 
After taking down the Northeast 10 Indoor Track and Field Championship for the first time in school history, two weeks ago, the number 20 nationally ranked men's team continued to take care of business, placing 10th overall at New England's this past weekend. The Skyhawks competed against top-tier Division I opponents such as University of Connecticut, but fared well in certain events. Sophomore Nick Staley took home first place in the high jump, clearing a personal best of 7 feet and a quarter inches. Meanwhile, senior All-American Corey Thomas finished third in the high jump and also captured second in the 60-meter hurdles, smashing his previously set school record by a tenth of a second. Thomas finished the race in 7.88 seconds, just one one-hundredth of a second behind UConn's Selwyn Maxwell. On the women's side, it was the relay teams making headlines and breaking records at New England's in the second day of competition. Both the 4x400 and 4x800-meter relay teams set new school records, finishing seventh and fifth in their respective events. Both teams continue to fine-tune their events in preparation for the national championship meet in Birmingham, Alabama, just two weeks away now on March 8th and 9th. The stage was set for an epic showdown, a clash of titans between the number one ranked Bentley Falcons and the number 14 ranked Stonehill Skyhawks. All eyes were on Easton this past Saturday in what normally is a rivalry of legendary proportions. Though the top two seeds have already been locked down in the Northeast 10, Bentley, with two games left, had yet to lose this season, but the Skyhawks, riding a 20-plus win winning season and a perfect home record of their own, were unwilling to yield. Here's how it unfolded. Stono playing their last regular season home game, and they were not going to lay down in this one, focused and determined against the top-ranked Falcons. They were looking good early on. That's Tori Faeta from the short corner with the jump shot, and that is going to be tough to defend for any team. Skyhawks opened up a huge lead in this game. The lead is by as many as 19. And it was plays like this. Mary Louise Dixon maybe the best transition player offensively in the conference. Here she's going to call her number one more time. Give and go from Asia Ewing. Left-hand finish. Oh, my goodness. Mary Louise Dixon, your back-to-back -back Northeast 10 player of the week. She is on a different level right now. And so is this hustle. This is exactly what wins ball games and creates historic upsets. Diving on the floor, Mary Louise Dixon finds a wide open Tori Faeta on the baseline, under the hoop. She started the play and she finishes it and won. The crowd is going crazy and Bentley cannot believe it. But you know the top team is going to come back at some point. It's just a matter of when. Lauren Batista in the lane. Turnaround jumper. Very good looking shot from one of the top forwards in the conference. But it was too little too late. The Skyhawks, they dance, they celebrate, they storm the court in the hangar. They achieve the unthinkable. The first win ever over a top ranked opponent in program history. Celebrate Skyhawks 73-66. to so could the men follow the act and make it a clean sweep of the Falcons on Saturday? If the four seniors, Sam Markle, Brian Hamer, Adam Pizzini, Raheem May Thompson had anything to say about it, one would think so. Sam Markle early on leading the charge with the reverse layup. Great look by the point guard. And you know we're going to call his name. Brian Hamer went on a tear in the first half. That's his first three-pointer from the corner. Stonehill's going to find him again. Jack Holt catches the ball in the high post, finds Brian Hamer. You can see it develop. No hesitation, nothing but nylon. Brian Hamer on a different level in the first half in this one. One more time from Rahime Thompson. No way. Brian Hamer goes for 26 points in his last game in the hangar. And if we're talking about senior shooters, might as well mention Adam Fazzini rattles that one home and has himself a bucket. Stonehill led. Early on in this one, here's a look at what we're going to see in the future. Carter Smith to Jack Cole, freshman to sophomore, point guard to center. Great pick and roll action. But Stonehill had no answer for Tyler McFarlane. In the grand scheme, he goes for 28 points. Bentley would go on to win this one 66-63. A disappointing way for the Skyhawks to go out at home, but not before Raheem May Thompson gets what's his. Nice three-pointer from the senior forward. Well, that wraps it up for this week's episode of Skyhawk Update. Stonehill Athletics marches on with baseball continuing their road trip and women's basketball embarking on their playoff journey over the spring vacation. You can catch the live radio broadcasts of those Northeast 10 tournament games in basketball on 91.3 WSHL-FM, as you certainly won't want to miss a beat on this incredible season the women are having. Folks, we'll see you back in two weeks on Skyhawk Update. Be sure to catch us on YouTube and follow us on Twitter. For Craig Garato and the rest of the team here at SCSN, thanks for watching. Have a great week. I'm